you are watching Redicon. Ankle sprain, 15% of all athletes injury. Most patients fully recover, 20 to 40 develop chronic symptoms and of pain and instability. So the mechanism of injury, usually inversion of plantar flexed foot. There are general indications of MRI. I think most of athletes will get MRI anyway. And actually some MRIs has been utilized more and more now, uh, regardless about this gate line. But if the, generally, if the symptoms remain more than six weeks, or if you suspect an osteochondral injury, you should have an MRI. If you suspect syndesmotic sprain or perineal tendon involvement, then you should do MRI as well. So they grade it uh, clinically and radiologically. Grade one stretching of the, uh, with surrounding edema of the anterior telofibular ligament. Grade two disruption, partial disruption of the anterior telofibular ligament and or the calcaneofibular ligament. And grade three is complete disruption of these two ligaments. Uh, MRI has limitation. It has very uh, overall good sensitivity and uh, specificity with some limitation. I'm not going to go through it. So what is the uh, MRI criteria to call a tear? Absence or complete discontinuity of the ligament. If there is a wavy or a regular contour of the remainder ligament, severe thickening or increased signal within the ligament and adjacent edema. So if we look carefully here, this is case number one. So we look at the shape of the fibula. Here the shape of the fibula is comma shape, right? So this is going to be the area of the anterior telofibular ligament. You can see here there is severe attenuation of the anterior telofibular ligament with significant surrounding edema. There might be some fiber, so this is almost complete tear of the anterior telofibular ligament. Can we see it in the sagittal? Yes, certainly. We see significant edema. We don't see the nice band that does extend anteriorly and attach to the talus anymore. We can see it in the coronal as well here. You can see the detachment of the anterior talofibular ligament from the tip of the fibula give you more confidence actually this is more of complete tear. Another example here, you, uh, this is the axial images of the ankle. You are at the level of the coma shapes. We know we are at the level of the anterior talofibular ligament. There is complete absence of the ligament here. There is slight wavy appearance of the residual fiber with surrounding edema. So this is another case of complete tear. Can we see it in the other plane? Certainly we could. This is the sagittal plane. The band that does extend anteriorly is absent. Case number three, another case. Here is at the level of, again, coma shape. You, you see lots of fluid in the gutter with absence of any ligamentous tissue. So this is complete tear of the anterior telofibular ligament. Again, we can see it in the other plane as well. Calcaneofibular ligament, if you lose the normal low signal intensity within the ligament with thickening, this is what we call a tear. Again, here you can see the course of the calcaneofibular ligament, which does extend too deep to the perineal tendon, is thickened, edematous. You don't identify any more fiber, so this is an injured ligament as well. This is a lucky patient. She's an MRI tick. She, she had an injury and she put herself in, in the magnets uh, six months uh, after because she had some chronic pain. And this is what happens. Usually they do scar with uh, some thickening. And this is what can result uh, eventually in anterior lateral impingement that we're going to see later. Deltoid ligament, uh, deltoid ligament usually has a normal fanning appearance. So if you lose that and you see thickening with edema, that's indicated tear within the deltoid ligament. Now we're going to move to the syndesmotic ligament. It's usually, a, uh, the syndesmotic ligament is very important to recognize because it's associated with a greater risk of residual ankle dysfunction and it takes usually longer time to get back to the field if you're an athlete. This is an example of an ankle axial. So you are at the level of the D shape. So you are at the level of the syndesmotic ligament. You can see here complete disruption of the anterior tibiofibular ligament with the globular appearance of the residual ligaments that mean retracted. So that indicates syndesmotic ligament injury. The posterior tibiofibular ligament, uh, on the other hand, is intact. Another case here, again, your axial images at the level of the D shape of the fibula. 
so we are at the level of syndesmosis so there is complete disruption of the anterior and posterior tibiofibular ligament uh, indicating a very high uh, instability of the syndesmosis this is another case you can see here uh, complete disruption of the anterior and posterior tibiofibular ligament with thickening and periosteal sleeve elevation of the posterior tibia this is an example as well if you see the posterior ma what we call the posterior malleolar fracture it's usually an avulsion fracture of the posterior tibiofibular ligament sometime uh, if you uh, see ossification and the syndesmosis usually it is indicating there is there has been a previous injury of the syndesmosis as well as in this case you can subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses for more modules and radiology CMEs, please visit www.radicon.org.